Good evening. So just as I promised, right at 6 o'clock, right at 7 o'clock, we're going to start. We'll finish right at 8 o'clock, 60 minutes, that's it. So I just want to go over how the evening will go. And first of all, I want to welcome all those who are visiting us via live stream. It is good to have you with us. And also, many, 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 many thanks to those who showed up this evening in this weather. You will automatically re receive canonization. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I will take your name down and I will make sure that you will receive heaven, period. So that's, remember when I said God was going to bless you for your goodness in coming here? That's exactly what God is going to do, all right? So each evening is the same evening, meaning each evening is the same format. Each evening is a different talk, just so that you understand that. So each evening is a different talk, but each evening follows the same format. And that format is, we'll stand in a moment, we'll mark ourselves with the sign of the cross. After we make ourselves with the sign of the cross, we will then say some prayers. After we say our prayers, we'll be seated for storytelling and sharing, and then off we go. So right at 8 p.m., if I'm in the middle of a talk, if I'm in the middle of a song, if I'm in the middle of a story, I'm just walking out. Okay? Seriously. Because it's 60 minutes for Jesus. And I promised you that, that we would start right on time, which we did, and I will end right on time, and out we go. Sounds good? So tonight's talk is going to be focused on trust. Tomorrow's talk is going to be focused on kindness. And the third night is going to be focused on leadership. All right, And each of those talks are going to be centered around storytelling, sharing. And so what I do is I take stories that have happened to me and then I connect them to where Jesus is. And so we know that Jesus did that because Jesus used what? Parables. Parables. That's exactly right. Jesus used stories. And he shared stories, and then he challenged his people to connect them with God and a specific lesson. So why don't we stand? We'll mark ourselves with the sign of the cross in the name of the, and of the, and of the, amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together the Our Father, the, glory, the Hail Mary, and the Glory Be. And we'll pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Saint Joan of Arc, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So I had a wonderful day today. Let me tell you what, I loved the snow. I'm serious. And let me tell you something. It's amazing how God provides. God always provides. Never, ever, ever in my life have I ever doubted God. Ever. 
because I've learned how to trust God. One of the questions that I have for all of you here today and all who are watching today is that whole concept of, do you know the voice of God in your life? In other words, do you know when God is speaking to you? In order to know that, you have to be able to trust that. You have to be able to dif differentiate between the voice of yourself and of your own ego and the voice of God speaking to you. Because the way God speaks to you is not the way God speaks to me because we're all very, very unique. So it was very interesting on my morning prayer this morning. I was kind of like asking God. I was. I was like, what am I doing in the midst of Evanston, Illinois in February? You know, what is this about? You know, and I'm serious. I'm having this dialogue with God. And then I hear a ding on my phone. And so I go and get my phone. And this is the message that's on social media to me. Father Sitchko, I was so, so super blessed to have you preach at the 8.30 a.m. Mass yesterday at St. Joan of Arc. I have a lot on my plate right now. You living the Great Commission of Christ. I've always wanted to be in some type of full-time missionary work since the age of eight, reminding everyone at St. Joan of the Arc that God loves us and has not abandoned us and that we need to be in church. Yes, my soul cried at Mass yesterday, and I'm so very thankful to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for sending you our way. Be blessed. You see? Now, for you, that may be a coincidence. For me, there are no coincidences with God. You will hear story after story after story that I will give you in which the real presence of Christ makes himself known. So it was just like, so I was just in Alaska. And I was like, the, the people of Alaska gave me these gifts as a gift to me in my travels. And I've got to tell you, I dismissed them. Now, you know, in my mind, I was like, I'm never ever going to use these. <laughs> Handmade for me. Handmade by one of the indigenous people who came to the mission. Okay? They just happened to still be in my luggage. I didn't pack them for this event because I came from there to here. You see, God makes himself known in the little thing. And yet, people still question. And yet, people still doubt. And so, what I'm going to do today, this evening, is I'm going to talk about trust. T-R-U-S-T. And I'm going to give you a formula in how to trust. And then, after that, it's going to be... 60 minutes and out I go. Trust. How do you trust? The first thing that you learn is that you've got to spend time with God. There's no other way. And for those people that think just going to Mass every weekend is what's going to get them to heaven, 
guess what? They're going to be in the smoking section for eternity. No, I'm serious. There are those people in their mind that think just because they go to church every weekend and that's it is what's going to assure them heaven. Yes, that's an obligatory part of who we are as Catholics. But my brothers and sisters, if you don't use what you learn here and bring it out into the world, then we're failing our responsibility. We have to be church in the world. In other words, let me ask you this question. Who today was led to Jesus by you? Who today, not so much by your words, but by your actions, who today saw Christ in you? You received him this weekend in the word of God. You received him this weekend through the Eucharist. You received him this weekend through one another. When you walk out these doors, it just doesn't disappear. That's why I ask you. You know, it's very interesting. After the 1030 Mass, actually it was the 430 Mass, there was an elderly woman who was walking out the door and obviously... Um, I don't want to say that she's hard of hearing because I don't know, but she was talking rather loudly to the person that was walking out with her Saturday evening. And she said, as they were walking out, she goes, I think that new priest is Baptist. <laughs> that's, that's what she said. So let me just assure her, wherever she is, that no, I, I am a Catholic priest. It was also very interesting because in between the 8.30 a.m. Mass, is that correct, 8.30? And the 10.30 Mass, I went to Starbucks. Now you need to know something. So I go to Starbucks three times a day. I do. And I get a triple espresso each time. All right? Yes. So after the talk here tonight, I'm going to go to, the, yes, and get my triple espresso. Just to give me a little hiccup. And so while I'm in the Starbucks in between mass, I decided to go in because the dry, you know, it was just too, and this is what I hear. Now people of Evanston, Tell me why I hear this. I go in in my collar, and this is what I hear. Honey, don't turn around. But I think it's the priest who told us not to leave after communion. <laughs> really? My brothers and sisters, we've got to spend time with God. And every one of you who are here tonight, and what a great crowd, seriously. Much smaller than I'm ever used to preaching in front of, I'll be honest. But I will also say in the conditions here, God will do nothing but bless you. Seriously. You think I'm kidding. I'm very serious. Every one of you will receive a blessing because of your sacrifice. And you have to be open to it, and you have to be willing to receive it. And how do we spend time with God? By doing things like this. For some, it's by praying the rosary. For some, it's by reading scripture. For others, it's doing acts of charity. But we have to every day be in conversation with our God. That's number one. You've got to spend time with God. You know, my mother is from Italy. She's, she's four foot nine. Little Italian woman. 80, 80, 89 years old, all right? I call her four times a day. Mom, what are you doing? I'm praying. 
I call her at noon. Mom, what are you doing? I'm praying. I call her at 5 o'clock. Mom, what are you doing? I'm cooking and then I'm praying. I call her at 7 o'clock. Mom, what are you doing? I'm praying and getting ready for bed. Well, see, some of you may say, well, your mom has nothing to do. <laughs> well, have you ever prayed 24-7? It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of dedication. Why do you think our church has monasteries and cloistered convents? Who do you think those people are praying for? You and me. Because why? We don't spend time with God. And when you spend time with God, you then form what? A relationship. That's the R in trust. And no relationship grows unless you do what? You speak and then you listen. You see, that's part of the problem. People have no problem talking to God, but a lot of people have a hard time closing their mouth and listening to God. No relationship will grow unless there's a give and a take. And it's the same with our relationship with Jesus. You know, I travel a lot, and you just need to know this. And, and I, I'm sorry if it offends anyone, but when I travel on the airplane, I don't travel in my collar. Okay, And the reason is, is when you go on an airplane in your collar, people treat you different. Okay? Try it sometime. Okay? No, I'm serious. Try it and see what happens. People automatically treat you different. I go on to the airplane and the first thing in my collar and the first thing I hear is, Oh, honey, thank God there's a priest on board. And I'm like, not if you knew my driving record, you know. You sit down next to someone and they knock over their drink or they hide their Vogue magazine. Every time I sit next to someone in my collar, they start sitting up straight and I have to sit there and go, I'm not a nun, okay? You know? There aren't any nuns here, are there? Sorry. Okay. okay. But you see what I'm saying? I mean, so what, how I travel, just so you know, I'm just going to be very honest with you, regardless of where I'm going, when I flew here, I did the same thing. I wore sandals, shorts, and my hoodie. Okay? I have one suitcase, and all it has in it is my clerics and this, my shorts, and sandals. That's it. And my tunic that I wear. That's all. As a missionary, you can't be lugging things around. So that's how I travel. And one of the reasons why I travel in a hoodie is because I sit by the window and you put your hoodie up so you don't have to make eye contact with anyone. So here I am flying from Houston Intercontinental Airport nonstop to Orlando. I'm sitting on the window. I have my hoodie up. And who walks on to the airplane. You'll never believe it. You'll never guess it. I don't even know if you know this person, to be honest with you, up here in Chicago. But his name is Joel Olstein. Do you know? He's, he's, a, he's an evangelist. He's an evangelist like me. And all of a sudden, I look out of the corner of my eye, and this is what I can see Mr. Olstein doing, looking at me trying to get my attention. And I've learned, my brothers and sisters, you see, on an airplane, if you make eye contact, that means you're engaged to that person. You see what I'm saying? And I'm not going to be engaged today because I use that time on the airplane for quiet, for downtime. But I could see he was looking at me and this was my conversation with God. Not today, God. Not today. No, no, I'm not going to deal with it today, God, okay? I'm on a flight from Houston to Orlando. I don't have time for this today, God. And all of a sudden, as the flight attendant, before we take off, is walking up and down the aisle, she says to me, excuse me, sir, do you have your seatbelt on? Sir, and I look up, and when I look up, guess what? He and I engage. 
And he gives that amazing, you should have seen his hair. Oh my gosh. No, I'm serious. He has great hair. Look at this. Look what he has. And he looked at me and he said, brother, do you have a relationship with Jesus? That's what he asked me. And I looked at him and I said, excuse me? And he said, brother, do you have Jesus in your heart? And he smiled. Oh my gosh, you should have seen his veneers. No, really. All I have is Invisalign, okay? And I looked at him and I said, Mr. Olstein, And he said, yes. I said, not only do I have a relationship with Jesus, not only do I have Jesus in my heart, but I receive Jesus every day in the Eucharist, in the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as a Catholic and as a Catholic priest. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And I'm like, no, not okay. You asked the question, now you got to listen for the answer. Time relationship, then comes the you. The you in trust is understanding. See, a lot of people don't trust God because a lot of people don't know God. God never promised us everything we want. God promised us everything we need, and there's a difference. Amen? Yeah. Understanding. And the only way you're going to understand God is by opening up Scripture and reading about God. You see, I've often said it, and I say it to every Catholic church I go to. If your Bible is in good shape, you aren't. You got to read the Word of God. You got to understand what God is trying to say to you in your life and in my life. Let me just ask you a question, seriously, and I don't want response, but I'm, I'm just being very honest. When was the last time you invited someone into this church? When was the last time You invited a stranger into this church. Let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters. You want this church to thrive and to grow and to blossom and to have blessings like you've never had before? You come these three nights to this talk and I will guarantee it. I will guarantee it. But you have to live it. You have to follow it. And you have to understand how God operates. You know, today, it was funny because as I was at Starbucks, there were uh, two uh, Chicago police officers, uh, and uh, they were officers, and they were behind me, and I decided to buy their, their coffee for them. And I told the barista, I said, I'm going to take care of the officers behind me don't say anything. People have given me gift cards, so that's how I know, you know, that I have that because I don't carry any cash on me. Like I said, I go town to town. We'll talk about that in a moment. So, so when when the officers got up there, she goes, "Oh, the priest paid for your 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 coffee today," and I was like. And the one officer turned to the other officer and says, have you been going to church regularly? <laughs> to the officer, and the other officer said, don't call me out. And so what did I did? I introduced myself. I told them I was giving a mission, and I invited them to the mission. And they're going to be here. That's how it works. By reaching out. By understanding how God operates in your life. You see, when you spend time with God, 
when you have that relationship, you turn and realize you got that understanding. And from that understanding, you have to do something that's very difficult that I have found, especially for those of us in the United States, and that is you got to surrender. You got to let go and let God. And what's so very interesting is everyone always preaches about let go, let God, but no one ever preaches about let God do what? Let God be God. Period. We're not God. Why is it so difficult for us to follow God's will and not our will? We pray it all the time. Not thy will be done, but your will be done. And when we goof, my brothers and sisters, we got to get ourselves to confession, we got to pick ourselves up, and we got to come back into the community. Oh, well, Father, I don't like to go to confession. Well, guess what? It's not about you, it's not. It's about something much greater. It's about realizing that you have fallen and then you share your sins with the priest and then the priest absolves you and you come back into the community of God, the faithful, even stronger and restored. Oh, well, Father, I haven't been to confession for 30 years. Welcome back. Oh, well, Father, I don't know what to say. The the priest will help you. In fact, you have two ways to go to confession, face-to-face or behind a screen. And if you go behind a screen, guess what? You don't have to make up a voice. Bless me, me, for I have sinned. You know, no. It's about something much greater. Time, relationship, understanding, surrendering. You know, I'll never forget when, when I was flying from Rome to Chicago to change planes to go from Chicago to Kentucky. I'll never forget. We were, we were flying, and uh, as we were about to land, we landed, and then all of a sudden, we took off again. And I didn't know what to do. And I turned to the person sitting next to me and I said to the individual, I said, oh my gosh, what's going on? Why, shouldn't the pilot be talking to us? Why isn't he communicating? This is not supposed to happen. And the person looked at me and said, well, maybe he's busy flying the plane. <laughs> You're not the pilot. You know, flying from Alaska here, I'll never forget, you know, um, here I am flying, uh, there's a seat empty, and then there's another individual sitting, a young girl, and it's nighttime, and and let me tell you what, it's getting very turbulent, and I turn to look at the young girl to kind of, you know, make sure that she's doing all right, even though I don't know her, and this is what I find her doing. Yeah, just playing on her cell phone. Then it gets really turbulent. And now I'm really starting to get concerned. And what do I do? I pull out my rosary. And I start praying. And I just kind of look at her. And she kind of looks at me. And I kind of say, oh, you know, I hope that this is not bothering you. I'm a seasoned flyer. So really, this is all very normal. Even though inside, I'm going, oh, my God, I'm heartily sorry for having offended thee. And I detest all my sins, you know. And she goes, oh, no, this doesn't bother me at all. And I'm like, it really doesn't? She goes, no. I said, why not? She said, my dad is the captain. (laughs) No, look, look at that. Look at that trust. She spent time with her dad. They have that relationship. And in that relationship, they have an understanding. With that understanding comes a surrender, a letting go. And then there's the final T. 
which is just trying. You see, that's all that God asks of us, is that we just try. You see, for all those who are home today, I understand that you're home. But I'm also going to invite all those who are home today and all of you today is to get back here tomorrow, to try to get here. That's all that God asks of us. You see, that's going to be one of the greatest, greatest challenges of our church. I'm just telling you right now. After this COVID is getting people back to church. I'm just being honest with you. They've gotten so used to the live stream so used to getting up in their uh, coffee and, and gowns and watching and walking around that when it's time to get back, we better have some type of initiative to welcome the faithful back. I'm serious, my brothers and sisters. You need the presence of people. We need the body of Christ. Yes, I can understand what is happening right now. But when this pandemic is through, the church better get to work. We better get people back in the pews. You got to try. You got to make the effort. Look at every miracle story. Every miracle story that Jesus is involved in. He doesn't do it all himself. What about, what about Peter walking on the water? Do you know that story? Hello? Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. That's right. Tell me the story. Who knows it? Right. We have how many people in here? 50 people, 80 people, and no one knows the story of Peter walking on the water? Really? Who knows the story of Peter walking on the water? Okay, they're in a what? No, they're in a boat. How many people in the boat? That's right, so about 12, 11. And there's a storm, and here comes Jesus. And Peter looks out, and he says what? Yes, and he says what? He says, Lord, if that is you, tell me to come walk on the water. Do you notice? It's not Jesus who says, hey, Peter, I want you to come here and walk on the water. It is Peter who says, Lord, if that is you, tell me to come and walk on the water. And what does Jesus say? It is me. Come And he gets out, and he does what? He walks on the water. He does something humanly impossible. He walks on the water. And there's always a hater. Wherever you go, there's always a hater who says, Oh, but he sank. Yes, he did. And he also is the only person that got picked up by Jesus out of the water and shown incredible mercy. And how did that happen? Because Jesus and Peter spent time with one another. And by that spending time, they formed a relationship. And in that relationship, they had an understanding. Peter saw and understood what Jesus could do. That he could raise the dead. That he could heal the sick. Jesus had an understanding about Peter. That he constantly put his foot in his mouth. And then Peter did what? He surrendered. He submitted. And he walked on water. And then there's always someone that says, oh, but he sank. Oh, but he sank. Yeah, but he tried. He tried. And that's all that God asks of us. 
is that we try. That's why you're going to be blessed. Because you got yourself. You risked to get here. You see, as a, as a Catholic, as a Christian, there is no way that you're going to be able to follow God if you don't risk. You have to risk. You have to get outside of your comfort zone. You see, this is what's so amazing. How many people were in the boat? Twelve. How many got out? What were the other eleven doing? They were sitting there watching. They were doing nothing. How many of us in our church are boat potatoes? Seriously, we come to church and we sit and we watch. We have to be enlivened by our faith. We have to be in love with our faith. Do you know in five years of being a missionary, of going town to town to town to town to town, this was the first time ever that I thought no one was going to show up. No, I'm serious. That has never, ever happened. I have not canceled one talk, even in the midst of COVID. We have had hundreds of people fill the church, socially distanced, with masks. And God said to me today, why do you do this? Why do you worry? I was like, oh God, you know, after, by the way, after each of these sessions, I take up a spare change collection. That's why the basket's there. That's how I make my living. That's how I go town to town, state to state, nation to nation. Is I literally receive that income and then I give it away. And the people who are watching on live stream, guess what? You can go online and make a donation. Yeah, I'm not stupid. F-R-J-I-M-S dot com. Father Jim S dot com. F-R-J-I-M-S dot com. You know, so I'm sitting here in prayer this morning. I told you. I'm sitting here going, you know, God, why am I here? What's the next email I get? I don't even know this person. His name is Cardinal Supich. There it is right there. It says... Welcome to Chicago, Father Jim. I wanted to let you know my nephew's family remembers you preaching fondly in Omaha. You see, testimony. Testimony. You see, why do I get all upset? You have to remember constantly, day after day, week after week, Month after month, it's an ongoing process. Learning to trust. Time, relationship, understanding, surrendering, and trying. It's so funny, I'll tell you this. My father loved cutting the grass. Okay? I can't stand it. No, serious. My family, my family. We grew up in Pittsburgh. I, we then transplanted to Texas, and my father loved cutting the grass. And when I turned 17, I decided to do something for my dad. On Saturday morning, I woke up very early, and I contacted the neighbor. He showed me how to turn on the lawnmower, and I began to cut the front grass. And can I tell you something? Within 0.37 seconds, my father, six foot six, former professional football player, came running out the door, screaming at the top of his lungs, what are you doing? And that's the edited version because we're in church. <laughs> I said, Dad, I'm cutting the grass. And he said to me, Jimmy, you can cut the front back grass, but you can't cut the front grass. I said, Dad, what are you talking about? He says, Jimmy, people see the front 
grass. No one sees the back grass. I said, Dad, I don't understand what you're saying. He said, you don't love cutting the grass and it shows. You know what, my brothers and sisters? If you don't love your church, it shows. Husbands and wives, children and parents, if you don't love one another, it shows. You can try to fake it all you want. It shows. God, God's people, it shows. There's our proof that God loves us. I'm going to tell a story in just a moment about my mom. He, I'm, I'm so thankful for the pianist to be here tonight. Really, he came all of this way. Also, the, the live stream guy in the back who's uh, a first uh, officer with United, he's video, you know, he's doing the live stream. And so he's going to play a little bit right now. And I'm going to tell a couple stories, and then it's going to be time to go. But, go ahead, you can play. play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how many. So, so here, I, I want to read a poem. I want to recite a poem for you real quick, and then I'll tell a story. And hopefully someday I'll use all of this. I wrote all this today, and none of this is being used right now. You wonder if I love you. And you wonder if I care for you. How many nights have you wondered if I think of you? Well, look at my hands. And look at my feet. And look at my side. And you'll look into my heart. I died for you. I died for you. And I die again. Because I love you. You wonder if there's hope for you. And you wonder if there's life for you. You search everywhere for meaning. Well, look at my hands. And look at my feet. And look at my side. And you'll look into my heart. I died for you. I died for you and I die again because I love you. And you and you and you and you and you and you and all of us will rise like me and live with me forever. You will rise with me and live with me forever. Why? Because I love you. Who was that written by? the next person who is in line to be executed on Kentucky's death row. Talk about reconciliation. Talk about conversion. Talk about trust. So here's a story I'm gonna share. So I, today, I told you I had a lot of doubting moments. It's what happens. Even when God continues to prove himself over and over and over again. So my mom, you know, little Italian woman from Cosenza, she's Calabresa, all right? Her name is Maria Assunta Sarasso, okay? She was born on August 15th, the Assumption of Mary. My earliest memory of my mother is at four years old when I would walk out of my bedroom and what would I find on Tuesday mornings, not every other morning, on Tuesday mornings, my mother would be rolling pasta dough in the kitchen. She would then, from rolling pasta dough, she would be putting broiled chicken in the oven and she would be making sauce, okay? 
And that's what she would do every Tuesday. And at 11 a.m. every Tuesday, there would be a loud honk that I would hear outside from inside. And all of a sudden, in the door, front door, because we kept it open, would come four huge, stinky, smelly, African-American trashmen. And where would they go? Into the kitchen? No. My mother would lead them in the dining room where there would be four places of china, crystal, silver, and cloth napkins. And my mother would wait on them, hand and foot. She'd serve them pasta, sauce, chicken. Do you know what? We are the only family in the history of this world who plan their whole family activities around Tuesday at 11 o'clock. I'm just telling you, we still do. Two years ago, Tuesday, January 25th, I happened to be preaching in Louisiana and I went over to Texas to see my mom Tuesday morning, January 25th. 88, 89 years old, what was she doing? Cooking, making her sauce. Here, I took a selfie with, hold on one second. I took a selfie with the, the uh, garbage man that day. Let me just find it. You know, if you don't have a selfie, people don't believe that it happened. No, I'm serious. That's why I take all these selfies of people. One second. Where are the garbage men? There they are. And I went and I took a selfie with them. And then I came back inside and my mother had died. Died. She died on me. I'm the youngest of five children. I have no problem admitting I'm a mama's boy. Both of my brothers graduated from Annapolis. My oldest sister's a teacher principal. My other sister works in athletics. What did my mother do in her will? Typical of my mother. My mother said that everything must be sold and given to the poor. Everything. It has to be divided between Catholic charities, Salvation Army, but she would leave one thing to each child. My oldest brother got the nativity set. Do you know what I got? I got her sauce recipe. Yeah, I'm the only one that has it. And my brothers and sisters ain't getting it. No, it travels with me. So I decided to do something for my mother's 90th birthday, I decided that I would contact my chef friend. Her name is Chef Giada de la Rentes. Have you ever heard of her? Oh, here, here's our selfie together. No, no, really, if you don't have a selfie, they're not gonna believe you. I need to make 90 bottles of this for my mom's birthday. It's an amazing recipe. It's all natural, no sugar, all this stuff. So Giada tasted it and Giada said to me, Father Jim, we're not going to make 90 bottles of this. We're going to make over a thousand bottles of sauce. I said, no, we ain't. She said, oh yes. She goes, this is too good. 
I said, what am I going to do with the Giada? She said, you're going to sell it. I said, I'm not making money off my mother. Ooh, she will have lightning. So what I decided to do is I decided to bottle the sauce and give half of the money that's raised to hospice and the other half to feeding the poor in Appalachia. by a store named Kroger's. It's not up here yet. It's been picked up by a store called Whole Foods and William and Sonoma. Now, why do I share this? Because today, everything was going wrong. The weather, and then I had four cases shipped here a week ago of my mom's sauce to sell, okay, a week ago. Well, it's still here in Chicago. They can't deliver it because of the weather. And then get this, they didn't send me four cases. They sent 14 cases. So between now and Ash Wednesday, I'm just letting you know, people of God, I'm no, no, I'm just letting you know that you're going to find me selling 168 bottles of sauce. No, I'm not joking. Through the town. If I have to set up a stand. No, I'm serious. The people who are on live stream, go to my website, frjims.com, and get your sauce. Tonight, I'm going to end with my mother's favorite song. And if you don't mind, I'm going to sing that for her in thanksgiving for her goodness to me and to the people of God. Listen to this song. Shelter me, O oh God. Hide me in the shadow of your alone are my hope. When my foes surround me, set me high above their reach. Hear me when I Oh 
He, di he didn't even know what I was singing. I just gave it to him, and I said, let's play this if I feel like it. He said, when? I said, whenever I say mother. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, there's a reason God brought me here at this time. I have no idea what it is, but there's a reason. As you go forth today, I challenge you to be people of trust, to spend that time, to form that relationship, to have an understanding of how God operates, to learn to let go by surrendering yourselves, and then just try. Make the impossible possible through the grace of God. You know, it was funny today as I was praying and as I was playing in the snow, as I was going around, everyone was kind of on their way and I'm saying hello to them and what are you doing? And, you know, they're like, who is this person? And when I struggled to find out, you know, are we going to have the talk tonight or are we not? Are people going to show up? Are they not? And then when the people called about the sauce and the 14 cases which are supposed to be in Plano are here, but they're not delivered, how am I going to sell these? What am I going to do? Once again, God says, In this world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. In this world ye shall have tribulations, but be of good cheer, be of good cheer. For I have overcome the world. And he has, and he is, and he will. I want to remind you something. Tomorrow, we will have the mission from 7 to 8 p.m. I really want this church filled in safe distance and masks. I want at least five or six people who are watching tonight to get themselves here. I want you to be able to invite others and bring them here. To make these three days a priority. So tonight, tomorrow, and then on Ash Wednesday, I am going to be here and offer a 7 o'clock Mass. It's just going to go from 7 to 8, probably out before then, where I will give you your ashes, I'll finish the mission, and off we go. So again, tonight is through, Tuesday, 7 to 8 p.m., and then Wednesday night, Ash Wednesday, 7 to 8 p.m., I'll have mass, I'll distribute ashes, I'll preach, and then send you forth at the end of the mission there's anything that I can say is thank you for being here this evening. Thank you for taking the time to risk to listen to the word of God. The Lord be with you. Please stand. May Almighty God's blessings be upon you now and forever, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. There's a basket in the back for any free will offering. If you wish to order sauce, you can go online, frjims.com. Whatever you can do, everything helps. God bless you all. Have a good night. Stay safe. Safe home. Bye-bye.